Um, so I did my previous video on Rings of Power on the lovely finale of the Rings of Power. Patronize me like that again, Captain. I'll have your ship. People have been asking me to do a review on the House of the Dragon. Um, since both shows are over, I can do a bit of a comparison on which one, you know, is better. And I think, you know, no spoilers, you know, needed in that situation. But I can analyze the season finale of House of the Dragon, compare it to what I said about the first episode, and do kind of the same thing I did with Rings of Power. Um, I've got a few clips that I picked out from the season finale, which is titled The Black Queen, and we're just going to have a look at them. So we start off with this clip of Rhaenyra speaking to her son. I believe it's Lucerys? And she's, he's saying, I don't want to be the heir to the throne, kind of complaining as she did when she was young. Um, and this goes back a little bit to what I said in my first video, where Rhaenyra seems as if she's young and she needs to grow up and kind of learn that she's been given this position and she has to accept it. And, and so that was, that turned out to be correct that, uh, her progression is that she starts off very young and uh, arrogant and she has to basically grow up. And I had to earn my inheritance. I'm not like you. You know, that certainly went a little bit sideways uh, in regards to the story and what happens, but she has, has become more of a strong, level-headed person than she was in the beginning, which I think is a good kind of natural uh, character arc for this type of character. Damon seems to be portrayed more as like a, a commander or a strong you know, warrior, and he wants to fight this war because uh, Alicent has crowned her son. Um, and so that's treason based on what the wishes of the king were. Uh, and so Damon is fully into this idea that he's going to fight a war to get his wife slash niece um, the throne and make her the queen. She does not want to fight a war. She wants to be more peaceful and diplomatic. And then that, you know, in the course of this episode kind of turns against her and ends up being a pretty shitty decision. Um, one thing that I do like about the writing of this is that, for me at least, you can see both sides of the situation. So you can't really side with one character or the other completely. You can see where Rhaenyra is coming from. You can see that she wants peace. But then you can see what Damon is saying and think maybe she's being a bit naive. I mean no harm, brothers. How the fuck did he get there? <laughs> I assume he came from King's Landing. He would have had to come on a ship. And the ship from King's Landing probably, you know, would have been spotted. Um, someone would have brought that to Rhaenyra and said there's a ship approaching from probably from King's Landing. But he just, because Dragonstone is not a populated area. It's a stronghold on an island. Every shore, I would assume, is monitored, especially if they're entering war. How did he get so close to them before anyone really questioned him? Because the two Kingsguard that are standing guarding Rhaenyra and Daemon, they pull their swords out, pull their swords on him. So he's obviously not expected. I mean, aside from that little glitch, uh, which I think might have been a little bit of a lazy cop-out, I do like this scene. I think that it's, uh, you know, it, it, she's being crowned with her father's crown, which kind of serves as another bit of a metaphor. She's following her father, and she wants to be peaceful, and she wants to be this and that. She doesn't want to start a war, and she doesn't want to have conflict. And so she's being crowned 
with the crown that belonged to the, to the man who felt the same way about things. And, you know, we know how that turned out for Viserys. He is, uh, you know, swearing fealty to her. He gives her the crown. I don't know how he got it. You know, was, did Alicent not, was she just throwing it out? Was it just placed somewhere, you know, because I think the last we saw it, it was on his grave or his casket or his wrapped body or whatever it was. So I'm not sure how he got that crown. You know, again, on Damon, you get this scene where he is basically threatening the two Kingsguard with his dragon. He, it's, they're trying to show you that he is a rule with fear kind of person where Rhaenyra is a rule with kindness and love kind of person. And so he is threatening the Kingsguard with death uh, and his dragon if they turn against him and turn against Rhaenyra. Um, I think when you think back to the first episode when he was um, sending his gold cloaks out into the city and killing all the, all the criminals, that definitely lines up with this. Uh, and that's a good kind of foil and counterpoint to Rhaenyra. Um, then you get this scene which kind of confuses me a little bit. You know, Rhaenyra is, and Damon are with their council and they're, they're standing over this strange glowing table. And then she starts telling them about the Song of Ice and Fire, which is a little strange because that seems to suggest that She's been thinking about that a lot, and it's a foremost thought in her mind. Whereas Damon, of course, is more focused on the more immediate issue. You know, he seems to be pretty upset that she's thinking about these, uh, you know, fantastical things when there's a more tangible problem. Okay, then there's this scene which I kind of like and I kind of don't. You have this kind of callback to the first, I don't remember, some early one, where uh, Damon is on the bridge on Dragonstone and Otto comes up with his, his party of soldiers and they have a little, you know, discussion. Um, so I like that this is calling back to that point. But then Rhaenyra flies in on her dragon, and I think they just, you know, push the call back a little too far. I think having them discuss on the bridge was fine, but then now she comes in on the dragon and she lands behind them, which, by the way, is not a very intelligent decision. You know, back in that time when she first did it, Damon was the quote-unquote kind of antagonist in that situation. And Rhaenyra was more or less on Otto's side. In this situation, Rhaenyra is now the enemy of Otto. So landing behind him and then walking through all of his soldiers unguarded, probably not a great plan, you know, it, those look like soldiers, they don't look like knights, so all it takes is one kind of ambitious or arrogant soldier to think, I'm going to stab this woman, and, you know, she's dead. And that's the end of that. She could land behind Damon this time to kind of indicate a change in the situation, because before she landed behind Otto which signified that she was with him and on his side. But now if she lands behind Damon, you're showing visually that she's on his side and that she's literally switched places in where she lands on this bridge. They had the right idea and they had the right metaphor, but they didn't execute it perfectly. Now you have this scene which... I think I like. <laughs> now, let me explain this. So you have this scene where Rhaenyra needs to send envoys to 
Winterfell and the Vale and then Storm's End. Her sons, the princes, say, oh, send us. And she says, yes. And I don't need to explain why this is a bad idea because the show explains it for you <laughs> why this is a bad idea. And that's why I think I like it because it seems like it was done on purpose, that this was a stupid decision on purpose. And it starts her kind of decline into wanting war and wanting to avenge uh, her son because the son is the heir to the throne sending him to treat with someone you don't you're not sure of the loyalty of probably not a good idea and i have to give this show credit because it builds her up this entire episode um and builds up Damon and makes you think that they're strong and they have a good kind of position in this conflict. And then it shows you Boros Baratheon. King or queen? The house of the dragon does not seem to know who rules it. <laughs> I like his character a lot because he basically says, who do you think you are? I'm not doing this. That's not how the real world works. If you want me to do something, you have to give me something in return, which is really brilliantly executed, in my opinion, because you've just spent this whole time thinking that Rhaenyra has this strong position of power. And then you leave Dragonstone and you enter Storm's End for the final third of this episode and you see that the real world is not actually as simple as she thinks and it's basically a, a metaphorical slap across her face i like the detail where he gets boros gets the letter and he calls the maester over i mean little little details like that are why this show is so much better than Rings of Power. He calls the maester over, I think, because he doesn't want to read it himself. You know, I, I toyed with the idea of maybe it's because he can't read, but he is a, a high lord, so he should be educated enough to read. I think it's because he doesn't want to read this piddly little message himself, and he wants the maester to come over and read it and then communicate the message to him, which is a great bit of character quirk and character, and character design, really, that just packs so much information about Boros into five seconds. I mean, you really get an idea of the kind of person he is just off of that. Then you get this scene where Aemond wants Lucerus's eye, and it's shown that Aemond has a some kind of blue gemstone in his eye. I don't remember what stone exactly it is. Don't crucify me, please. Boros says basically, not here. Screw off. You know, I'm not gonna deal with this. It's it's an interesting scene because it from my perspective, what it does. The Targaryens have been fighting this entire thing. And then you come and see Boros, and he, he basically tells them, I don't care about your conflict. Get out of my house. <laughs> Take it outside. I don't want to deal with it. And then he says earlier on, there's a king and there's a queen. You can't decide you know, what you have as a ruler is an outside perspective in the world giving an opinion on the situation, which is really smart as a writer to include that, because now it adds another dimension to the world that this is taking place in and the conflict that you're seeing. And it's not so, you know, the Targaryen civil war encompasses everything. Well, no, it doesn't. You know, there's other people doing other things 
in their realms that don't really care who wins. You know, Aemond, he can't control his dragon and it eats Lucerus and his dragon. Uh, spoilers if you haven't seen it yet. Interesting. I think I like it. I mean, I've said that a few times this, episode, this video, but, you know, it's weird because I don't know how it plays out in the book. I heard somewhere that Aemond does this on purpose in the book, but I can't confirm that because I haven't read it. You know, his, his motivations seem a little bit strange because in the hall earlier, you got the idea that he was going to hurt this kid, p potentially even kill him. Um, he was, you know, running at him with a dagger. And then he chases him on a dragon is surprised and disappointed and horrified when his dragon eats him. So was it just him, uh, you know, calling back to when they were kids and them kind of horsing around and, um, you know, being violent with each other but not really wanting to kill each other? I mean, it's just kind of, and as a impetus to start a war, it's like, okay, so the thing that starts this war is a guy being a dumbass, <laughs> accidentally killing someone, and it starts a war. So I, you know, I don't really know how to feel about that. I think it would be more uh, interesting from my perspective if he did it on purpose. You know, if, if all of that anger from being called a piglet and... and all that teasing from when he was younger, if that, it, at this point, boiled over and he just thought, you little brat, I'm going to kill you now. And he's, you know, it just shows that he's, you know, mentally unhinged, which I think they're kind of, you know, indicating already. Um, I think I'll, you know, I'll briefly go over just the show as a whole. There were episodes that were really good there were episodes that were not good. Uh, there were moments in certain episodes that really redeemed the whole show itself for me. The brother of Corliss, um, he gets his head cut in half by Damon. Um, that was shocking. I, I say that my favorite characters from this show are Damon and Viserys. Um, I know a lot of people didn't really like Viserys or they didn't think that he was a character that connected enough with the audience and so his death didn't really have an effect on them. I don't agree with that. I think I liked his story arc and how he progressed and when he died it was, you know, pretty sad and shocking even though it was like Jesus, like when is this guy going to die? <laughs> He's so crippled and withering away. You know, Damon is a great character. Just objectively as a character, he's fantastic. Um, I know the internet certainly would agree with that. <laughs> and there's so many different kind of conflicting elements with him, and you never know what he's going to do. But you can always kind of guess the 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 broader strokes of what he's going to do, just not how he does it. And it's usually how he does things that shocks you. You know, what do you think in the comments? Um, you know, I've seen all of House of the Dragon. I did not see all of the Rings of Power. I saw bits and pieces of it. Um, but this show, I, I got all of it. <laughs> Every uncomfortable, bleeding fetus uh, head decapitation birth scene moment of it. Most of the people who are going to comment have probably seen it. So what were your impressions of it? Um, do you think that they, you know, made something worthwhile? It was very different from Game of Thrones. 
but there were a lot of elements to it that called back to it and were very similar. I mean, but it, you know, comparing this to Game of Thrones, like it's, it, it's a very different show and it feels very different.